the next step is it's our turn. It's our move. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about this situation? Mm -hmm. And as I was pondering on it myself, I said, Lord, what is the answer? And he took me to the book of Esther. And thank you, Sister Sally, for reading that scripture for me. Esther chapter four. It's talking about talking about a lot of racial situations going on here. In the beginning, we see racial situation and racial profiling was happening a long time ago. This is in the Old Testament. So this was even before Jesus Christ came on the earth. And so we find that in Esther, we have a lot of Jews who had been held captive. And Esther had not came on the scene yet. But we have, in this book of Esther, we have Xerxes, who was the king at this time. And he reigned over 127 provinces in that area. So he was over a lot of people. And he wanted to have a celebration to, um, for his people. He wanted to have this big celebration, and it went on for days. And so he had a wife named Vashti. Vashti was a beautiful lady. You know, he wanted to show her all, fellas, y'all know y'all have a girl, y'all wife, y'all believe she's the beautifulest thing in the world. He wanted to show her off, right? Mm -hmm. So he wanted to show this lady off. And so he called for her to come to be a part of the celebration so everybody could see her. And so when Vashti heard, she decided not to come. So when she didn't want to come, it made King Versus very angry. You know, he was angry. He felt disrespected. But most importantly, he, he was embarrassed. He had been drinking. He had been amongst all these people, and he was like, hmm, let, me, let me bring my wife out. Let me show these fellas what I'm working with. You know, so he, he called for her. He decided not, she decided not to come. So now he's embarrassed in front of all of these people. And he's the king now. So they told him he had to, some advisors that he would always go to, and they would always give him advice. And they told the king, he went to his advisor, he said, what should I do? And they told him that you should get rid of Queen Vashti. You know, write, write a decree before you can to get rid of her. So, and you get yourself another queen. And so he did. So it was ordered that Vashti would be no longer queen. She would be removed from being a queen. And now King Xerxes had to find himself another queen. So that's when we have Esther. Esther comes on the scene. And Esther, she was a beautiful lady herself, and she was the, king, the king's favorite, the king's favorite wife. He had other wives, but she was the one. She was the favorite wife. So she had favor. You know, how many know favor ain't fair? Y'all know favor ain't fair. So sometimes God has something for us and prepared for us that, you know, we have access to that no one else has access to because we have the favor of God upon us. And so Vash, I mean, uh, Queen Esther, she had God's favor on her, and she was the king's favor. And so Vash, so so um, Esther had a cousin named Mordecai, and Mordecai was a Jew. And Mordecai, he was working for the king, and he was a king, one of the king's officials. Now he had raised Esther from when she was. Her parents had died, and so once her parents died, Mordecai came in and he took, you know, took Esther in and, and raised her as his child. And so he would advise Esther and tell her things, you know, to do and how to carry herself. So she learned how to, you know, learn a lot from Mordecai. So there was a time when, when they were selecting a whole, looking for a queen for the king. Esther was one selected. She was chosen. She was chosen for such a time as this. And so when Esther came onto the scene, the king saw her and the king would call the queens in and they would go into his harem and they would spend time, they would spend the night with him. And he would choose them based off, you know, when they would spend the night with him. And so Esther was, that's how Esther became his favorite, you know, besides that she was beautiful. And so, but what happened, there was a man named Haman. Haman was an Agagite. 
and they hated the Jews. They were against the Jews, but see, Haman, he had been promoted to become the highest official in King Xerxes' um, government. And Haman, every, when Haman came through, everybody bowed down to Haman. All the officials, everybody bowed down to him, except for Mordecai. Mordecai would not bow down to Haman because Haman didn't represent his God. Haman, Mordecai knew that he wouldn't bow down before anybody except his God. So when Haman learned that Mordecai wasn't bowing down to him, he was furious. He was angry. So instead of dealing with Mordecai one-on-one, -on -one, he decided that he would just kill all the Jews. And so once Mordecai found out about this, Mordecai, you know, he began to weep and he began to tear his clothes and, and cover himself in burlap and ashes, you know, and Haman, because he wanted to kill the king, he to kill the uh, kill Mordecai, he knew he had to approach the king. And this is what he said. In Esther chapter 3, verse 8, he says, Then Haman approached the king Xerxes and said, There is a certain race of people scattered through all the provinces of your empire who keep themselves separate from everyone else. Their laws are different from those of any other people, and they refuse to obey your laws of the king. So it's in the king's interest to let to not let them live. So just to make sure that he get his request granted to kill all the Jews, he went before the king and told him, he tried to butter up and butter up, make it sound good and say, you know, they don't want to serve. Basically, he wanted to tell them they don't want to serve you. You know, they want to do their own thing. That's, ba that's basically what he was telling them, in other words. Just, just, just pump his head up and make him feel, you know, some type of way. Because he didn't like the Jews. He wanted to get rid of them. And so, you know, and it's the same thing that's been going on today with all the people, you know, all the young men, the women who've been killed out here with, by police officers. You know, they may have been innocent. They may have done some things wrong. But the way they had, the way they died, you know, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't just, you know, that wasn't right. The way they just killed innocent people, you know, for no apparent reason. And they didn't have to handle things in that manner. But, but what is the answer? What do we do? What do we do? So this is what Mordecai did. Mordecai sent a message to Esther because by this time Esther was in the palace. And she was the only Jew that was that close to the king. Hey, Mordecai worked with the king, but he was an official. But Esther was the queen. So he felt that she had some more authority, some more power to get something done. So he went to her for help. And on verse 13, he sent a message to Esther. And he said, you know, he, he had told Esther, you know, about what was going on. And, you know, how the king, there was a decree to kill all the Jews in the land. And so... It made Esther sad as well. You know, she was terrified about this. She didn't want her people to have to die because, for one, Esther had told nobody that she was a Jew herself. She kept her background, her nationality, a secret. She didn't let them know this because that was her way to get into the palace, to get next to the king if she was going to be, you know, selected. They were looking for a queen, for the king, and if she kept her identity secret, then she could get into the palace and have an opportunity and a better life. So, when once Mordecai got the message to Esther, and Esther found out, okay, this is what's happened. There's been a decree issue against her people. She sent Mordecai sent another, this message to Esther. He said, "Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all the Jews are killed." So sometimes we we think that when situations are happening, it's taking place, we think it's not going to affect us. We think that it can't happen to us, but don't think for one minute that what's going on in the world can't happen to you. Right. It's a lot of situations, all these killings, and it's more than just killing. It's a lot of stuff happening in this world. A lot of wicked stuff takes place. A lot of evil taking place in the world. But don't think for a minute that it can't happen to us. You know, it's, it's all of that, everything from, you know, we hear about earthquakes, we hear about wars and rumors of wars. We know because we're in the last day. Yes. So the things that's taking place in and around us, you know, on a large scale, we're looking at things on a large scale, the government. You know, but look at the things that's happening right in your own neighborhood, mm -hmm. right in your own homes. 
you know, y'all had, y'all just recently had vacation Bible school, right? Y'all had children come in. And I heard someone say that the children didn't, there was a, the Reverend Pastor said it was the first time they had come to church. Well, these children can't come to church unless somebody bring them. You know, somebody, somebody got to step up to bring these kids to church. So Mordecai went to Esther for help. And because Esther was in the palace, she may have thought that, hey, you know, I'm in the palace, what can I do? Because she feared for her life. Because no one could go before the, the king without him inviting them and him holding out that gold scepter. The king, if he did not hold that gold scepter out to you and signal that you were invited to come and come before him, you could be killed. You were going to be killed. And it was coming from the king. And everybody in the land knew it. And so basically that's what Esther was telling Mordecai. She was telling him, look, if I go before him, I could be killed. And so that's why he said, look, don't think for a minute because you in this palace, you will escape all the Jews, all the wild Jews being killed. He says, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will, will die. And who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Who knows, Christian? Who knows, saint? Who knows, believer? Who knows, child of God? if you were made for such a time as this? Who knows if you were sent for such a time as this? Who knows if you all were sent for such a time as this to help those children like you helped them in Vacation Bible School this week? You were sent for such a time as this. Who knows? We don't know what, what all these situations that we face when we walk outside our doors. Who knows what we were set there to do? Look at what's happening inside our own homes. A lot of us got situations going in our homes that we don't even know the answer to. Amen. We crying out to the Lord, what do we do? Amen. We crying. These people, these people here, they were clothed in burlap and ashes, crying out to the Lord. They were fasting and praying. You know, they were looking for answers. What do we do? They were about to be killed. They knew they thought they were gonna lose their life because the decree was set out. Now, when you set a decree, when you decree a thing, yeah, that's the final word. When you decree a thing. But see, what they, what they didn't realize, see, Haman didn't realize what he was saying when he told the king, he said, there is a certain race of people scattered through the province of the empire. Their laws are different from any other people. He didn't realize that he was talking about the people of God. See, how many know God got his hand on his people? And God will help his people. Yeah. See, Haman didn't realize that. He didn't know. He don't know anything, but he don't serve God. He didn't serve the God that they serve. He thought that he was all powerful and almighty. And he would go and, you know, everybody bowing down to him. He getting this recognition. He got his chest all puffed up, feeling all proud, you know. That's what that's what Haman was. And so he felt like everybody should bow down. He felt like he might have thought that he was God. He probably thought he was, you know, second in charge to the king. And really, because he was that high official and everybody bowed down, he really was. So they came to Esther, and this is what Esther sent back to Mordecai. He said, she said, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. See, Esther, she knew that she needed to make a move. So she went back and told him to fast for her. Do not eat and drink for three days or nights. Don't eat. She said, my maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go to go in and see the king. If I must die, I must die. So she had love enough in her heart that, look, she knows she had to do something. She had to make a move. She had to take some action and do something to help her people. See, Esther was smart. She knew that she couldn't go before the king without going to God first. Because if she had went on her own, she would have been killed. If she had gone to the king before consulting God, she would have been killed. And see, that's the problem with a lot of us. We make decisions and do things without going to God first. Right. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all his righteousness will be added unto you. So sometimes we make decisions, we got to be conscious to think about it and go before God first. Ask God, what would he have us to do? God, what do you want me to do in this situation? Like Esther, she knew that she had to go before God, so she ordered a fast. And ask everybody, all the Jews, to fast and pray. 
for her. And she pray, and she fasted and prayed too. So what's the answer to our situation? We got to fast and pray. We got to fast and pray. See, some, a lot of times we pray all the time, but we don't fast. Amen. See, we don't always do them both together. Yes. See, because it's hard to fast. Yes. You know, it's hard to give up that food. Mm -hmm. You know, and back then, they, they, they went on fast for three days. Normally, a fast back in those times was for one day. Back in those times, this is before Christ now. They fasted for three days, showing the importance of how, how important this situation was. Because they were facing death. They were facing death, and it, it, it wasn't going to wait. When Haman was ready to kill him, he was going to kill him. So that's how serious it was. And see, we got to be willing to take time out to fast. We got to be willing to say, hold up, I'm going to do without something so that I can go before God. I'm going to do without this food so I can go before God and, and pray to him and see what he will have me to do. See which direction he will have me to go in. See if he will have me to take this job. Do I need to do I need to quit this job and go to another? Is it time for me to leave this job? Somebody messing with you on your job, you need to fast and pray. Amen. Amen. A lot of times we have we go to work. We we go to church on Sunday, then Monday, somebody messing with us on our job. Amen. And we need to fast and pray. Go to your bathroom. Go to that bed. I go to the bathroom every day and pray. Ain't nobody messing with me on my job right now. But I do it anyway because it's a habit. But we need to fast and pray, you know, for everything. We need to fast and pray. We got to get that in our mind. We do them once and we pray all day long. But we don't always take time out to fast. So what, the, what is the answer? We have to fast and pray. Do without. Go without something for, for even if it's for an hour. Even if it's for an hour, Christian. For one hour, go without some food. And go into prayer before God and ask him what he will have you to do concerning your situation. Well, it might be in your household. It might be on your job. It could be dealing with finances. It could be dealing with your children. It could be dealing with your church. Whatever, whatever the situation, take time out and go before God and fast and pray. And I guarantee you, when you do that, you will get an answer. You will get an answer. And most of the time... Speaking for myself, when I fast and pray, I get an answer immediately. Amen. Just as I did when the young, when the man was talking to me and asking me, where is God in this? Where is God in the world? What is he doing in the world? What, how is God handling this? God has already done it. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to us, Christians, believers. If you say you love God, do what he said. Because God says if you love him, you will keep his commandments. And if you, Esther loved these people so much, she was willing to go in before the king. She said, even if she must die, that she would go before him. And she would, and, she, and Esther went before the king. Mm -hmm. So when she went before him, she, she positioned herself in such a way that he would see her. And she had already fasted and prayed at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure she's probably still praying. She positioned herself in the hallway so that he could see her. And when he noticed her, he held out that gold scepter and signaled for her to come. And he said, what is it, Queen Esther? What is it that you want? So Queen Esther told him, she was like, she didn't tell him what it was yet. She prepared, she wanted to prepare him to, you know, invite him and Haman to this meal. Fast forward a little bit. So basically, she, she went before him. She prepared a meal for the king and Haman and invited Haman to it. And then Haman went home and Brag to his family and said, hey, you know, the queen, I'm going to have dinner with the king at his table. And the queen invited us. We're going to have this meal before the queen. You know, he's feeling real good. But little did he know what was happening. Little did he know what was getting ready to take place. See, you, you can't mess with God's people. You can't mess with the people of God. The God is always watching. He, he has his hands on us. You know, he's always with us. The Bible says he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we, 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 what we got to do is just keep trusting God and know that he's here. He's here and he know everything going on in the world. He, it's already written. Because everything that's happening now, it was happening then, a long time ago. It may have been different people. It was just different people and some of the same situations was going on back then. And God was there. He sent the Savior into the world and he sent Jesus. So we got to re realize and recognize that, hey, God has not gone anywhere. His hand is upon us. 
He's with us. He's leading us and guiding us all the time. But sometimes we don't take the time out to listen. Mm -hmm. So the answer that I give you is to fast and pray. The answer that God told me to speak to you was to fast and pray. You need to fast and pray. It might take an hour. You might need to do it for a day. It might need, you might need to do it for three days. You might need to do it for 40 days. But whatever the situation is, you go to God before him and fast and pray and tell him what your situations are. And he'll meet you right there where you are. He'll give you a discernment and tell you exactly what to do, just like he did with Queen Esther. And so when Esther went before the king, the king told her, whatever you want, even if, even if it's up to half of the kingdom, he would do it for her. And he didn't even know still that she was a Jew. And when she told him about it, after a while, fast forward, after a while, she did find, tell him that she let him know that she was a Jew. And so was Mordecai. But see, Mordecai and Esther had helped the king, helped save his life. Because there was a plot against the king. And Mordecai told Esther, and Esther told the king. So that was another reason that the queen, Queen Esther, had favor with the king. So what do we do in a time like this? People of God, we're being used for such a time as this. Because we have a say-so in this world of what's going on. We can, we can take authority of all the wicked and evil things that's going on in this world, even if it's nothing but just fasting and praying. The Bible says some things don't come except for fasting and prayer. Fast and pray. Second Chronicles chapter 7 says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. So this is what God says. This is the answer. It's written. <clears throat> I didn't make it up. It's written. This is what God said. He said, if, if my people, mm -hmm. if my people, if you Amen. are saved and you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you are his people. Yes. So this message, so this word applies to you. Said, but you got to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself. He tells us how to do it right here. He says, humble yourself, pray, and seek his face, and turn from your wicked ways. Some of you had to turn from your wicked ways. And you're hindering your blessing. Yeah. You're blocking your blessing. So you have to be careful. Be mindful. Hum, say, oh, before God, say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I know I've done wrong. Lord, I know I messed up. Yeah. Lord, I know I said some things I shouldn't have said. I went yeah. some places I shouldn't have went. I hurt some people I shouldn't have hurt. I did some wrong, some things I shouldn't have done. Yeah. And he knows that he will forgive you because he's faithful and just to forgive. Yeah. He's faithful and just to forgive us for all of our sins. And cleanse yes. us from all sins and unrighteousness. Yes, yes. So humble yourself and pray. Turn from your wicked ways. Then he will hear from heaven and forgive your sins and restore your land. God will restore our people back. He will, all this police brutality and all these things that's happening in the world, we can pray about those things. We can do it. We can handle it through fasting and prayer. Even if it's just one person. I heard the song, the, the man sing on the song. He said, even if I got to go by myself, the choir was saying, even if I got to go by myself, yeah. Even if I got to pray by myself, you got to be prepared. Now, we sing a song, even if I got to go by myself, but when it's time to go, are you going to go? What you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to this, this Now's the time. So we got to do something. If we want to see something taking place and we want to see some change taking place, we got to do some things. Some things we got to do. Same thing keep happening over and over in our lives. The same thing keep happening. It's something we're not doing. How can we help? What can we do? What's the answer? We got to fast and pray. Fast and pray. So God will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and restore our land. He said then he will open his eyes and open his ears and be attentive to every prayer. Every, not one of your prayers, not some of them. He said to every, every prayer in this place. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen.